Hey. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. I didn't uh, catch you off guard or anything, did I? No, I was just getting a glass of water there. Nice, nice. So uh, I'm glad that the whole background thing worked out. Looks good. Yeah, yeah thank Dude, you. You're looking so healthy. You must be playing like a ton of shows right now. Uh, it's we're just getting back into the fold. It's really nice, man. It's been uh, it was been a long time where we took a healthy break. Um, did a couple pop up shows here and there, just kind of like loosely announced to some friends and family. But uh, now, you know, with kind of the vaccination rate around here, getting a little bit more up to speed, it's back into it. It's man, it's great. Yeah, that's one of the questions I was going to ask. Is um, it just seemed like that kind of worked out? I mean nothing in the last two years kind of worked out for anybody, but yeah. just because it's like you guys couldn't do shows at all in the last yeah. year, that was like the perfect time to kind of like hunker down and write and record. It's kind of wild, Eric. <laughs> that, I, so I'm so fortunate. I, I'm in this band, City of Invention, with some of my best friends and some new people that um, have just become so important to me and who have really open up their hearts and their souls and uh, everything that makes them who they are and allow me to kind of join in and, uh, and contribute. I'm also, uh, I'm also fortunate to meet some other acts as well. And um, I was just, I was having kind of a meeting with one of them yesterday and they said uh, exactly what you just said, but um, you know, you don't want to phrase it in a way that sounds insensitive, but it, the gist of it is, is that it's, it's, it was, turned itself into a perfect opportunity to just kind of put a lot of things on hold and just hunker down and really focus in on uh, the creativity and the writing. And uh, it, it just, it did really work out well. And for a city of invention, um, the studio was real lifelong. Um, it really was somewhere to uh, direct all this energy that, you know, was growing up and uh, get in there and do that. That's, that's perfect. Um, so I've got to ask, uh, where does the name come from for the band? You know, that's a great question. And I, the band has been together for uh, 10 plus years. Whoa, I didn't know that. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And I'm the newest member. So I, I had the fortune of slipping in there kind of they, uh, like I said, I'm in some other acts and in 2019 summer, I was really, really busy and they were kind of left in a lurch being a drummer for a kind of high profile show every year they do a show for um uh cancer benefit it's the ride it's the pan ohio uh cancer ride where these people get sponsored a ride for hundreds of miles from uh, i think it's columbus or cincinnati to cleveland and it was uh, in scott who's the founder of the band's hometown of lakewood and that was a really big deal so i told them i would fill in you know and, <laughs> Years later. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't have time to be in the band, but I would fill in and uh, man, like a practice and a half in all I could think was, please ask me to be your drummer. Uh, I, I just it was it just really spoke to me and uh, and it worked out. That's all to say I'm the newest member of the band. I don't know where the name City. <laughs> I don't know. I, Fair enough. I, I, I want to say, and I'm, I'll, I'll be the first to admit if I'm wrong, I think it was something where uh, it was a momentary thing where he need, they needed a name and it just kind of came around and it was something that popped in. They might have been doing a gig in Akron because that's kind of the moniker of Akron, Ohio, is a city of invention. And uh, I, I think it's a great name. in a lot of bands, a lot of good bands with a lot of terrible names. And... Uh, that happens to be one of the better names, in my opinion. So. Yeah, yeah. Sketchy name. You, you yeah. think of it, you know. I thought that was great. Um, yeah. So I guess that dovetails right into my next question, which was how long the band's been together. So you're saying you joined about two years ago. Yes. And they've been around for 10 years. Had there been a previous incarnation that had done any recording? Or is this kind of like the, the, the new album yeah. was like their first foray into that? Right. That's a great question. Um, no, there had not been any previous recordings. So um, Scott Budzar, who is one of the loveliest and most honest and uh, open individuals I've ever met in my life, it's his band and his brother-in-law, they are married to twin sisters, um, are, I think Joe, the bass player, his brother-in-law, has been in the band for most of, if not all of the time the band has been together. 
Um, and they've had, there have definitely been other incarnations of the band. So there's been uh, previous drummers, other guitar players, other lineups. Right now we're a four piece. So you've got Scott on lead guitar and vocals. Well, lead slash rhythm guitar. And, and he writes all the, he comes in kind of with all the songs sketched out. He's, he's a prolific songwriter. I mean, some people just have it in them and it's such a special and unique talent. But he, uh, he shows up with sketches of the song, you know, and lyrics pretty much fully developed. And then you've got Mark Watt, who, do you know Mark? He was a couple of years ahead of us. Uh, uh, yeah, he was in a ton of bands from even back when I was in high school and college and Kent. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was always kind of in awe of him. Um, he was in, uh, I think when, you know, our latter years of high school, he was in Stone Soup. Yeah. Okay. I think I even Kevin Walter somewhere. I bet you do, man. And it's fantastic. <laughs> uh, check them out. Stone Soup. They're on Spotify. Uh, they just re-released a, uh, like a, God, whatever it is, 25th or 30th or whatever it is, anniversary album, but it's fantastic. Uh, so Mark is, uh, he has actually kind of does a lot of the lead guitar. He does keyboard work and sings. Um, and so Mark was able to join the band around, I don't, you know, 2016, 2017. He was seeing them around town and he was really digging what they were doing and they didn't have any kind of like keyboard presence at the time. They might have even been a three piece and he just said, hey, love to contribute. And uh, it's like a it's like a marriage made in heaven. I mean, um, Scott and Mark's songwriting, the way that they the way that they gel and they blend, and their and their voices, you know, and be so bold to say it's they're just so complimentary. And it's uh, you know, and then of course when Mark was in the band, they were doing uh, more gigging around town at the Venice. I don't know if you remember the Venice at the at the spot to see bands now, and um, Zephyr and just some of the places around town. Scribbles Coffee, which Scott and his wife uh, own and operate. So I would catch them around and, you know, dug what they were doing and you know, just find itself to do that. Came back to your question. Uh, <laughs> they, in all that time, never really had the right chemistry or incarnation to kind of get in the studio. They, Scott always wanted to. Right. Um, but they just never really had the opportunity to do so for a, a myriad of reasons. And, uh, you know, but I'm sure that, you know, for, you know, even what you would say a, a new band, you've got to pay your dues. You've got to play open mics. You've got to play bars. You've got to play, you know, package deals just to kind of get your name out there. And um, there's just so many bands. I mean, I'm guessing you guys did a lot of shows in 2019, maybe not 2020. No, not in 2020. Well, Actually, we did do a few shows. We did Scott's 50th birthday, right? Obviously, so what? The, the curtain fell mid-March, right? So prior to that, we did do a couple shows. And yeah, we were trending. In 2019, you know, uh, we probably got in a half dozen from the time I joined until the end of the year, um, you know, in Cleveland and then uh, more south of Cleveland where we're located now in Kent, Ohio. Um, and then, the, then we pumped the brakes, but now uh this is uh this so today is what thursday september 9th right today we have our album release show uh with another great local band that's really on the up and up they're called the buffalo riders they're a three-piece very kind of like you know, some chains and, and and really young prolific writers um playing with them but now over the next four weeks we have three gigs so yeah it's definitely picking up um and the music scene around here, you know, it's uh, it's pretty healthy. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's healthier where you are, um, but it's doing well. I've, you know, clubs come and go, um, and different clubs cater to different music. So some clubs are more supportive of like original artists and live, and uh, you know that kind of scene. Other ones are more kind of um, operate more like a business, and they want more bands that do uh, popular music for popular music. And you know, right. Just, uh, um, so I, I did want to say that um, I have heard the album on Spotify. I dig it. Nice. Yeah. Um, two tracks that stand out to me. Um, I've only heard the whole thing once, but I love the groove on the astronaut. Mm -hmm. so that was a great album opener yeah. because Thank it's you. like, you don't really know. Um, I had heard Middletown road, but I wasn't yes. sure. I'm like, I know okay, that was kind of um, later and the track list. So I thought, well, yes. how's it going to open? And it, it opened up with a really tight groove. And I was really pleasantly surprised that because I'd heard Middletown Road first. I'm like, well, what's the rest of the album going to sound like? And it wasn't like a hit you over the head. It was still kind of the same kind of style, um, maybe more up tempo, 
but I was so happy that there's melody on your album, man. I mean, I know that sounds weird to say. Oh, yeah. There's so much stuff that I hear um, from, you know, and you've been playing for a while, but I'm just bands in general where they, they really have to hit you over the head. And it's like, uh, maybe you've seen this old interview with Alice Cooper where he was talking about for a time he tried to manage bands in the 90s. And he's like, okay, guys, you've all got the leather jackets. You got the attitude, hit me with the song. And then there's like, yeah. blah, 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 for four minutes. And he's like, guys, 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 uh, where's the chorus? Where's the, where's the middle eight? Where's, where's the song? You know, you, you right. want to get a song on the radio or you, you want to get something out there. And they're just like, so right. that was really cool. And the other Thank one you. that um, spoke to me a lot, and um, maybe you can guess this too, is uh, Take Me to California. Yes. Um, mainly it seems like he's kind of going through something that I kind of went through where it's like, um, I moved to California for a while and then, um, by hook or by crook, I ended up back in Ohio for a couple of years before moving back out here again. And there was a time when I really thought like, man, it's so tough because I know so many people in Ohio, uh, I've done projects here that have been, you know, pretty cool. And I've, I've met a lot of great people, um, the snow is always going to suck, yeah. <laughs> you know, yes, eight or nine do. months of snow. It's in coming. June. It's coming. Yeah. In June. Right. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? I mean, you make, you forge so many great relationships. There's such a great artistic community, um, especially in the Kent Akron and you know, Cleveland area. But yeah, yeah I totally get what he sang in the song about the yearning to come to California. Um, but there's also that thing, um, and maybe you've heard this expression too, being from Ohio, that all roads lead to Kent. <laughs> yeah, that might be a slight modification, but yes, yes, I Yeah, am. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it was funny. I remember being in uh, college and even after that, um, people would want to get together and like, hey, I'll, I'll meet you guys in the flats or I'll meet you guys. They've been like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's this place called Franklin Street in Kent. Have you heard of it? Yeah. Like, yeah 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 oh yeah I'll, I'll meet you there in 15 minutes okay great uh, but yeah i totally got that and um so for me it was uh, great and then the album has eight songs yes the standard album has eight songs correct and then Is we have a- there a uh, different version of it that may have additional tracks or there are uh okay. so we actually uh we recorded 12 songs in the studio and through just kind of strategy and planning uh, and just kind of observation and all that, you know, there's been a lot of thought learning that Mark Watt is a real, uh, he's got his finger on the pulse. Uh, he's a real music guy as far as just like consuming music and, and being really just, I mean, we're fortunate. Um, so he wanted to really badly press one. Um, I don't think he's ever done that. I've never done that. I mean, you know, you've got your guys from like, uh, Donut Fiends, if you remember them, and, uh, you know, Jamie Stoneman and the like, you know, everything they did when, was seven inches in vinyls, but I've never been, I've, I've done a lot of stuff, but I've never had vinyl. And uh, it was a real thing for Mark. Well, you can only fit 45 minutes. Of music. Uh, yeah. So Mark really took it upon himself to listen to every song and every order and every permutation, trying to find that balance of what we could do. And what it came down to was we ended up with a standard album that's uh, eight tracks, and that's what we released. Um, and then we have four bonus tracks, or actually what we will, I think our intention is to release as an EP uh, before too long. Um, maybe get that on vinyl too, maybe a seven inch, or maybe even cassette tape we're talking about just for nostalgia. <laughs> That's, that's cool, because um, that, that yeah. re- reminds me, um, I did a little bit of research, surprise, surprise, on mm-hmm. Reverb Nation, and there were two tracks that I found, and I wasn't sure if those were going to be cut or were cut at the same time as uh, the new album, or um, they were just older tracks, which were uh, My Name is David and In My Falling Down. Okay, yeah, yeah. Does that those predate are... your time in the band? Or It does. Okay. It does. And in fact, I've heard of those songs. <laughs> We've yet to kind of work them into our repertoire. My name is David, especially that's been, it'll be brought up every you know, few rehearsals. Oh, hey, we should work that in. But the, yeah, those are not songs that uh, I know or that I've learned yet. They were not recorded in the studio. So 
It's so uh, interesting because I'm listening to those songs and I knew that, you know, the new album yeah. was new. It had been recorded like over the last year or so. Yes. And I listened to those songs and I like them, but they're totally different. And bands, you know, they get more influences and they change over time. But I thought, and I know you and I haven't heard you play for a while, but I just thought the rhythm section is so different on this, man. I yeah. thought the um and then maybe this was a uh, an influence on scott because when i heard the, the stuff on reverb nation i thought this is more like a um uh, like early um God, what's his name paul westerberg or like the replacements oh. yeah, and like, okay. the, the new stuff is not like that at all so i thought yeah. like i don't i can't how can i insult the replacements but they had more of like a ramshackle kind of like rhythm section and your playing is not that at all you're playing yeah, a very yeah. tight. No, there's a lot of ways to get it done. And I mean, uh, it's, you love the replacements, right? And you love Paul Westerberg. So it's not, uh, it's not a criticism. It's just a stylistic difference. And I mean, right. some of my favorite artists, it's very loose and you know, shitty <laughs> in a great way, right? It's not. Uh, I can't remember the name of the band. There's been so many bands that I've heard over the, over the years where, um, oh God, most of their songs were like under a minute. And it was just variations of, it's over and they're sure, like yeah. thank you <laughs> and it has yeah it has a place right it's uh it's everything has a place yeah it's art so you know when you're listening to music what you know where do you want it to take you where does it take you is that is that where you are in the moment i mean like it's that's a beautiful thing about it and scott uh is just as comfortable playing this material acoustically at his coffee shop you know uh for his 50th birthday party last february uh, there's a song uh, that we've yet to record. We really wanted to called "Girl," which is a very Scott writes about what's in his heart. So a lot of it it's about his family and about his wife Beth, who he adores and is his soulmate. Middletown Road is about him meeting her. Um, there was a road in uh, in uh, Pennsylvania, in Middletown Road, where they had a hill at the top, and they would walk from opposite directions and get pop and. Okay, now I don't have to ask where the name of the song came from. There it is. Yeah, it's that. <laughs> uh, but that's that's all to say that Scott's been on a long journey, man, and he's. Uh, you know, for that birthday party, we opened up the show with a cello player um, named Devin, who was fantastic, a local student at the, at the university here. And um, uh, I played triangle and shaker and, you know, he <laughs> acoustic guitar. I mean, he just kind of came in and he found his wife at her table and we just surrounded her and serenaded her. And that's how we started the show with that song. Uh, and that's all to say that Scott is he's real prolific and he's real versatile um, and he's got a long background. So he, he was in a, uh, a band. Oh shoot. It's going to, it's going to escape me at the moment. It will come to me at some point, but he was in a band in the nineties in this area. That was a uh, very kind of punk rock, you know, uh, they would play, I think, you know, wearing diapers and or socks and that's it. Very you know, chili peppers. Yeah. He's, yeah. Very chili peppers downstairs where, you know, it would be packed to the gills and there, there would be like moisture raining from the ceiling because of the condensation of just the bodies oh and, yeah um yeah so uh geez it's right on the tip of my tongue anyway he's got a lot of uh you know history himself so he's you're influenced by the people that surround you one of the one of the best things about this band is the collaboration and scott's willingness and his uh heartfelt appreciation to come in with that skeleton and then hand it to us and let us develop it and be so open to you know the way that we shape it and I was going to ask about that, too, because you were saying earlier about that he's the primary songwriter, but I know Mark writes songs, and I'm sure he oh, yeah. writes songs, too. So is right. it kind of like a, um, let's say, like a Radiohead situation where Tom brings in the skeleton or the zygote of the song, and then you guys are allowed to kind of obviously you know, make up your own parts, but add to the melody, suggest like a bridge or a solo? Very much so. Very yeah. much so. And that's that's really the beauty. I've... Um... You know, I, yeah, I've been in, I've been in original projects, many, a lot with Mark Watt, um, and each one has its own flavor and personality. But this one, you know, I don't know if it's because we're men of a certain age now. <laughs> our life experience way to put it, yeah. Uh, uh, our, our, yeah. I wish this was whiskey, but it's just water. Yeah. This is, so I'll have enough for both of us. Uh, it's later my time than it is your time. Yeah, that's true. Still morning here in freaking 85 already, but. Yeah, that would have stopped yeah. me. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, yes, it's very collaborative. He's very open to, you know, you mentioned that the mel the melodies and the harmonies are such, such a treat. I've, I've, um, over the last couple of years, I've really had an opportunity to sing a lot more. 
uh, with all the groups I've been in. I'm, I'm now I'm certainly I call myself a third year sophomore with the singing. I'm definitely not trained, but I've my desire. I love drumming. It's my passion. You know that I've been doing it. Since You're not going to pull a, a Phil Collins or a. Uh, I it's Don not my Lee intention. Or... It's not my well. I do sing. <laughs> you sing Lane some, but no, that's not my intention. But I, uh, the drumming will always be a part of my heart, and my passion. But I find myself being so uh, inspired when I'm able to sing lately um, while playing, and it's well. I mean, I, I mean, as the drummer, you're in the engine room, but mm. also um, I can imagine when you sing, it's just like you just have to feel the total focus is on you. If you're playing the drums and singing. I mean, you basically are the song at that point. Well, I, I mean, I, you know, you know what I'm yeah, saying. The, 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 I don't know. The focal point. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's, and I guess, you know, in this band, it's now, I'm never just singing alone. It's always, I'm not, I'm, I don't sing lead in this band at all. Uh, but I get the opportunity to sing a lot of harmony and uh, it just, it's, it just is, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to be able to do that and it, it get that layer of texture and I'm playing a non melodic instrument. So when I'm able to add melody with my voice or harmony with my voice, really not melody, when I'm able to add harmony with my voice, it just really elevates my experience. And I think it uh, allows us to just in, uh, enrich in, you know, what you're hearing this we you know, I feel like we do a lot of um, things in the, in the vein of the band of horses where they have a lot of stacked, uh, vocal harmonies in there and it just it, to me um you get a lot of people a lot of uh players that you get really technically brilliant or really good songwriters but when you get that the 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 sheen the real that really elevates it is, is the is the vocals because a lot of people you know that's what they look on to that's what they're listening for is the, the lyrics or the or the or the, the, the singing so that's the easiest well even more than that um and i'll take it one step further is the music that I've been gravitating toward in the last like 10 or 15 years is just um, you can find the most technically per, you know, astute players and, you know, you can find your Neil Peart drummers that can play to like uh, the time of an atom, <laughs> like with a, like a yeah. metronome, you know, yeah. um, a click track, but it's the soul. It's the soul it's that the comes feel, right? through. And yeah. I would honestly, me personally, like, rather listen to music with a little bit of flair and, you know, mistakes rather than just auto tune the fuck yeah. out of everything and just yeah. suck the soul out of it. There's an honesty to the rawness, you know, that comes from live playing and, you know, clicks have their place. I've, I, like I said, I've over the last 10 years, I've been in acts where there's a lot of, I mean, I, my other original project, is really technically savvy and it's a three piece and those two guys who are both absolutely brilliant players uh technically more proficient than i'll ever be um their whole setup is virtual so they don't they don't even have amps they play play and everything we do is with in-ears and everything we write is to a click which i'm used to um it's not it has its place i guess is what i can yeah, say yeah yeah but i but my soul, my background, my, my, you know, my real place of Zen doesn't have a click track. It's, it's got a, it's, you know what I mean? It's, it's got a nice fat, you know, uh, pocket that you can move around in and still feel comfortable and allow for a little bit of that human element, which I think is what you're referring to that. Yeah. That I mean, I, there are so many bands that I would say are so worried about sounding, you know, whatever they deem professional and, mm. um, the, all the bands but then it's like uh even bands that i never would have listened to when i was like in high school that i've gone back to and like rediscovered like the band yeah where it's just a bunch of guys in a basement three singers the songwriter is not even a singer no matter how much right, right. Um, um but yeah and it's just uh it's there's something beautiful about that and it's like yeah you really could go back and auto-tune that but it would just take away the the magic and the specialness of it. But um, right. speaking of magic and uh, specialness, take me back to, I guess it was this past spring when you first heard Middletown Road on the radio. Oh, man. Yeah, that was amazing. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the local station. It's the Summit 91.3 in Akron. Um, huge, huge. Brad Savage is kind of the, uh, he's the lead guy on that, that he, you know, and he's such a champion for local music. 
And uh, yeah, man, I know, you know, it was super special. You turn it on and, you know, they, he's talking about you and all of a sudden you hear that first moment and you just, you just get goose flesh because it just. Were you, were you like at home with friends? Like you knew the time it was going to happen or, or was it was. just random? Oh, you were? Was. No, yeah, yeah. 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 That so, they, is so yeah, there's amazing. a, uh, they have a local spotlight every weekday. It's called uh, the 330, which is the area code here at 330, uh, Monday through Friday, where they feature local bands and, and when they they're a little it's a little gray you know they'll talk about um you know they'll play the black keys and they'll play other acts that uh, are out of nashville right now but maybe the person was from akron or something right. as long as it has a tie back i mean they're not they're not really going after like the pretenders but i mean like they're from the they're, area initially yeah you know, and it so it but they're so uh they're so supportive and it's so so wonderful and yeah i mean so we knew that we would be on that 33 minute segment and so you're just kind of like waiting and then, you know, and oh, here's the world premiere from City of Invention. He's got a real kind of like, uh, he's like a ringmaster the way he DJs. Master of ceremonies, yeah. Yeah, he is. He really is. He's got a larger than life kind of persona. And, uh, you know, and he's like, you know, he'll just kind of talks you up and supports you. And yeah, I mean, I, I, it is special. And I mean, I, I didn't have the opportunity to be with them, but we were kind of like, you know, with with the social the way it is and then just the, the ability to reach out so easily now i mean we were we were in contact right away afterwards and we recorded it and you know listened back to it a couple of times and you know we, we've heard it a million times but there's just something about it there's something we, about the radio though because it's just you know playing it on a, a cd player or a laptop or streaming it, it's great yeah. but there's just something because you know that people could be Anywhere. At their job, they could yeah. be at the gas station, they could be driving in a rainstorm somewhere, and they're just turning down the dial, trying to find anything to come in on the dial. Um, and that song comes on, and it's just like it's you, yes. I mean, it's you and playing, and you're hearing it back, and it's just, I don't know. I mean, on a certain level, it, have you yeah, had yeah, anything they're... before that had been played on the radio? I have, yeah, I've, I've, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I've had the pleasure and 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 just the uh, the fortune of being in a lot of uh, a lot of bands. So the other ba the other band I'm in, we've we've released some stuff. It's been on the side. I'm in the, the Twist Offs. I've been in them for 29 years. They've been together for I don't know. we do the math. I mean, we were like, I think '86 is when they started. Wow. So yeah, Kevin Walters, older brother Eric, started that band in '85, '86 when he was in high school and. In 99, 2000, we actually did a full show there at the studio. Wow. Um, so that, that station in particular is incredibly supportive uh, of the bands I've been in. Um, it doesn't diminish it though, Eric. I mean, you just, there's something so romantically um, uh, just undeniable about the radio too. It's, it's, you know, it's limited. I don't know what it is. I mean, about the radio, because uh, I've tried to talk to this about, uh, young people younger than us are you know whatever because they just get their music from online but sure. there's just something for me for the radio because I just yeah. picture people you can I picture people doing things and they have the radio on at their office because the radio is usually something that's in the corner it's on Correct. thinking about it but um I don't know passive I mean, but ever present yeah 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 so I just got to say congratulations on that even that in itself is a huge victory. Thank you. Because I mean, yeah. you've been in the band. I mean, if you think about, there's the relatively short time I say that you've been with the band, and the next thing you know, you're recording a single and it's on the radio. Yeah, and that was like what a year and a half later, and you're on the radio. Yeah, yeah, it really was. I mean, yeah, it just feels like, and I mean, these are uh, these are the words. I, I hate to put words in other people's mouth, but they said it. Uh, this uh, this was the incarnation that was kind of waiting to happen of the band, um, you know, and again, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to have hubris. I, I, you know, we're not, we're not spring chickens anymore. I've had some experience. I've, I've, I've gotten around. I've played, I mean, I've played a lot. I've been doing this now for a long time, 25 years. Plus. And, uh, you know, I've, I've there, I, the, I was in a band for the last decade that was playing about 70 dates a year. Uh, we were traveling all over the place, you know, Michigan, Indiana, the Virginia, Florida, all over the place. And I, and I put my time in. So I kind of, I had my finger on the pulse and, and I, it, like I said, it was such a treat. They, they treated me like a ringer when I joined this band. They kind of like, 
they were like, oh, we got, we got him, you know, and this guy's got, you know, he knows. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I've, I, you know, I have some experience with some things and I'm happy to, and I feel so honored that they were so open to my uh, feedback and just kind of like taking this special, special music that, you know, you've had an opportunity to hear. And I've been, I've been just basking in it for the better part of two years. And just so, I mean, every time I hear this music, it just brings me to the edge. It really does emotionally. It's so powerful for me because of the honesty of uh, Scott's songwriting, but they have been so open to my uh, input as far as refining, you know, because it's really easy. And I think the mark of something uh, from when you're inside the music, you want to, you want to stretch out that intro. You want to add another verse. You want to, well, let's take that around again because it feels so good to play it, but you have to step back and try and be the listener. And like, is this adding, you know what I mean? Are we getting to, what's the point of what we're saying? Are we getting there fast enough? Are we, you know what I mean? And, Gosh, man, the engineer at the studio, we, we recorded at uh, Son of Moondog Studios in Kent. And that guy is... What's his name? Uh, his name is Dave Sakini. Uh, okay. I've had the pleasure of working with him for a long time, 20 odd years. And he's a musician, musician himself. And he's an engineer. But boy, does he want to put that producer hat on. <laughs> you know, and, you, and you, you, we walked into it eyes wide open. We so knew- did, did, did you guys... Uh, or Scott or whoever uh, produced as a group, or did you bring in an outside producer? We didn't. No, we did produce as a group with a heavy, heavy input from Dave. Um, sometimes solicited, sometimes completely non-solicited. Okay. <laughs> he, you know, he took one song in particular, which I have to say, because it's only fair, is a song that the majority of the people, because we did, I, I, are you going to ask about the Kickstarter? No. Go ahead. I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to bring it up here shortly because I have a lot to say about that. But we did do a Kickstarter to fund this album. And it was successful. It was, it was incredible. It was incredible. We, uh, we went into this out. We went into the studio knowing kind of what the rate was going to be. And we ended up tracking 12 drum tracks in one day. And that was the, obviously drums are the first thing you do because we just went in so charged up and spent an entire day doing it. And uh, at that point, we're like, uh oh, we might have to see this through. And, uh, so, and the pandemic and everything and the lifeline, everything we talked about already. So we did. And then we turned around and we're like, Oh, here's the bill. So yeah. And it was substantial. It was substantial. I mean, they don't give that stuff away if you want to quality guy, right. studio, which we had. So we're like, well, so we did. And it was every, all these friends and family and everyone stepped up and we raised like, a really substantial amount of money and I have all this merch I can show you now that we've produced as, as thank yous that we now have to sell but we had we produced for the for this and um what was the original question I forget I'm I've, I've lost <laughs> oh it's just about the production but yeah the production so yes yes so anyway Dave uh as a reward one of the tiers was handwritten lyrics if you gave above a certain level Scott would hand write lyrics to a song for you and, uh, of the dozen or so people that chose that tier, almost all of them chose the same song, which kind of lets you know that maybe it's one of their favorites. And that's the song that Dave, the engineer, we went in and recorded this, and Dave made it this, you know, kind of. And it's so important, though, to have that um, fresh set of ears. And one example I was going to uh, yeah. piggyback on that and talk about um is R.E.M. Uh, in the glory early days of R.E.M. with Bill yeah. Perry playing drums. Yes. Um, one of his jobs that he kind of put upon himself was to be the song editor. Correct. Which is to say, like, um, I guess he would say, um, if it's too grandiose and ridiculous, he said he would get into bullshit territory. And then the other side of it was, it's not there yet. You know... And as the drummer, I mean, no offense. Yeah, that's, that's like a huge weight. That's kind of been my role. That's kind oh, of been really? my role. And <laughs> I stepped into it for our first couple shows because I, for my other act, the one that I was talking about that I did a lot of, I was, I was the quarterback. I ran the show. I made the set list. I called off all the songs. I, I called audibles. I fired. That's, that band uses uh, some backing tracks, not a lot, but some. Mm-hmm. It was a cover band doing popular music. So some, you know, as a 
there's only five of us if the band we're covering has horns and you know all this auxiliary stuff we had some ancillary stuff in there so it would so it was my job to keep the show going and um and i had that as a strength so i brought that in and that was my first little foray into it and they were receptive so at that point it was like well okay maybe i'll, maybe I'll offer my about some of the writing and some of this stuff and it's it it's very much what you just described with the REM situation where, Hey, it's like, Hey, is this really getting it done? Are we kind of getting too uh, verbose? Are we, are we getting up there? Like, are we going to reel it back? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you know, and the studio was a huge lesson an expensive, huge lesson in that. And the next time we, and we're already chomping, but we have a whole another album plus that we want to, you know, get in there right away and record because we have the music Scott's got, I mean, he's just, a, you know, he'll come up and be like, I wrote four songs last week. And we're like, good Lord, man. <laughs> well, that was going to actually leads into what another thing I was going to mention was, mm. do you have a dedicated like rehearsal space where you guys can just show up any parts of the night with, you know, soundproofing and just knock it out? Yeah, we do. Uh, Mark Watt uh, has a, a basement. <laughs> And uh, if it's soundproof, man, what does it matter? Yeah, it works out great. And his family is our tr- our troopers. I mean, they just put up with it. And uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say it's soundproof, but I mean, they have it worked out where they'll host like a little, uh, you know, uh, his wife will host a little ladies' night out outside. They have a they have a really nice outdoor area, so they'll just exit the house, and it, it's okay, in, yeah several tiers. So the kids will kind of. But I have to say, his two sons are pretty are pretty into it, so they'll. I mean, there's no escaping it. You're going to, I was going to say with you being the drummer, it's, they can literally sit together with acoustic guitars and a, and a keyboard and write the song. They bring you into it as the drummer. Everything's going to come up. Yeah. So the, just the yeah, yeah, yeah. volume of it. So. Yeah. And I'm, I, I try to be cognizant of that. Uh, last year, while in the summer, while we were prepping for the album, we would Joe, the bass player has a lovely home. Joe and Scott live really close to each other uh, with a, you know, a modest back porch in a neighborhood. And that's where we had our, that's where we did the, for that, you know, trying to be socially responsible before the vaccine, before all that. Yeah. We still wanted to get together, but we definitely wanted to be outside and kind of distance ourselves. And uh, you would play for a couple, two, three hours, once or twice a week and the neighborhood, they would be out there like, you know, having a coffee or a cocktail and listening. And it was, but I really pared it down. I just bought a kick drum and a snare and a ride and some hats, trying to be respectful. And we would write in that way and, uh, and then pare it down and just kind of, you know, so yeah, you, you need to be, you know, I mean, you know, like the, this is the drummer. It's when you walk in, I mean, every, the volume of everything's got to come up, but that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yes, there is. Will there be a more uh, music videos and promotions? I know you have the video out now for Middletown Road. Yes. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to disclose those or not, but... Uh, you signed a uh, Disney... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, a non-disclosure agreement. But uh, I will say, you brought it up, taken to California. Uh, another classmate of ours who lives out your way, Patrick O'Connor, who a uh, very successful um, artist, graphic artist and designer. And he was going to be in town for the 4th of July. And he reached out to us and said, Hey, I'm, I'm dabbling in videography. And I, I have my hands on a nice camera. Would you guys, I'm in town. Would you want to get together and do some footage for a video? And we said, well, it kind of only makes sense to do take me to California because he has a unique opportunity to get a lot of footage from California. And of course that song is about, Scott's never been to California, but it's that desire to get out there and see it. And then, you know, he's anchored here as you kind of, you, you know, very succinctly put, you, 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 you put your roots down here. It's hard to walk away. I mean, but, but uh, man, I just watched the final edit of it last night. Oh. Like, I was in tears. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And it, it tells the story of the song so well. And I mean, Pat really, just nailed it i mean he's so talented there was never really a question if he was going to or not but oh my gosh what a treat that and again that we were able to include him that you know another fellow alumni artist in his own right i mean you know very successful uh was able to just kind of contribute and, and, and add to the story so yeah there will be more videos forthcoming right on okay cool so you heard it here first folks yeah yeah <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry, guys. I hope I'm not in trouble. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So um, we mentioned, you know, everything coming out of um, the lockdown and mm-hmm. things slowly starting to open up for you guys. Do you foresee um, touring outside of Ohio in the fall or the spring? I don't know. That's a great question. I know the desire is there. Have you done so before the lockdown? No, not with this act. Not with okay, this act. Okay. No, we've, uh, uh, as far as I know, they've played, you know, just regionally here in the, the you know, Cleveland, Akron area. Okay. Um, I know the desire to do something, you know, to just kind of like get a little, because, but you know, with this album release and with, you know, people like you and things like this, we're starting to build a little momentum and we're starting to network with some of the other bands, you know, younger pups in the area that are out there going after it. And, uh, you know, if, if there's going to be an opportunity, it's probably going to be sooner than later. So I do have some connections out of state uh, that I've kind of cultivated over the years and I would love to try to, yeah. <laughs> something, even if it's like modest, you know, even if we could do something like, Maybe Michigan, Indiana, you know, kind of. Dude, even in like people's backyard barbecues, because oh, absolutely, somebody there, their cousin or their son is in a band, and then they're going to tell. It turns into that old Pizza Hut commercial where it's like they'll tell two friends, mm-hmm. and then they'll tell two friends, and then they'll. That's I mean, it. it's just the way it goes with music or movies or writing right. or painting or any kind of artwork. It's like all you need is that one person to say like you know, it's pretty cool. Let me put down my red cup of drink of choice mm. and go tell my buddy who is in a band, like maybe they want to do like a split bill with these guys, you know? Absolutely. It's so much more special with original music too, because it's so, it, you know, it's such a part of who you are and, and it, it's, it's just the, the, uh, the reward and the appreciation that comes if somebody, anybody, everybody, anyone. <laughs> but I mean, that says, hey, that touched yeah. me. Sorry to interrupt there, but you guys have such a huge leg up on anything going on, especially locally right there. I mean, you've got the album out. It's already streaming. You know, Mm -hmm. you've got product. You've got a song on the radio. You've got a music video with more to come. So in a way, and I don't want to downplay, you know, the Twist Offs or any of the other bands you were with, this is pretty much like... um, the, the stepping stones are already there. You guys have just have to walk up the stairs at this point. hundred percent. This band's in the pole position for that. Yeah, absolutely. And that, the, the other band is like lamenting. They're like, ah, oh, you're so far ahead of us. And I'm like, Hey, it's a process. We'll get there. Cause we're right in the middle of, of the album, writing it and we're self-producing. It. And I was like, listen, we'll get there. I want it for everybody. But yeah, twist offs. Oh my gosh. We, uh, we played the lock lock three at Akron. I mean, we get together and play a couple times a year and it's, it's delightful. And uh, you know, you get these guys that have, you know, these old, veteran war dogs that have you know musically speaking that have gotten together you know they've been doing this forever and it you know rehearsal that's more drinking alcohol than it is playing and then we step on stage in front of you know three thousand people and you just flip the switch and it's on and that's great and that's all that band's looking for but yeah this band and i mean mark watt is like chomping at the bit he's the one he, i'm telling you he put all the work in not all of the work but he's been so much work and juggling all these things with his his family and his profession and all this stuff because he wants it so bad and he's put us in this position where we have T-shirts, hoodies, stickers. You know, we have a CD that we made. Uh, and, uh, can, I, can I see some of the? You said you had some of the. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, so, I don't know if there's uh, a better yeah. time than to lead right into yeah, that. So yeah, right here I've got uh, this is. Oh, gonna, that's awesome! Yeah, this is the uh, uh, the Kickstarter reward. So this is a special limited edition T-shirt that we made for a tier. We will have it for sale at some of the upcoming local shows in limited quantities, but this is this is something that's going to go out to uh, the backers that backed this tier at our uh, and and it was made uh, by Scott. He does um, the screen printing himself. Who, who did who did the artwork? Scott Scott the guitar. Oh player. Scott. Okay. Yeah. So the artwork is actually uh, a local uh, graphic artist by the name of Jay Geldof, who is uh, a well known and very successful uh, comic book and graphic artist. I mean, he's you can look it up. He's done stuff with. Uh, houses i mean for decades and he just has to be mark watson neighbor so <laughs> yeah all coming so, together yeah 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 synergy right so he did uh that that light bulb logo and uh some of the stuff you go if you go to our band camp page so you mentioned band camp page you can check it out that's kind of our main landing page or our social media pages on instagram or facebook you can see some of the, the artwork that uh jay has done it's lovely it's do you very, have the weird. album or cd itself 
I do. So, uh, Mark, one of the first things he made was that's so bitching. That's yeah, funny. this is amazing. So this is a uh, lyric and uh, uh, a photo insert that he made that's super versatile because this itself is just a full color uh, book that he put together that contains uh, photos from the album shoot and uh, all the lyrics for all the songs. Wow. Yeah, and then, um, so this is gonna be kind of a spoiler because this is the, uh, this is gonna be for the deluxe. But it's got all 12 track listings I'm gonna cover. Nice. But yeah, so you got the, there's a there's a quick peek at the last four songs. I'll leave, I won't leave that up there for long. <laughs> Write it down yeah. fast, folks. Yeah, right. For all these folks that are <laughs> for the all the viewers out there. And then I also have the so this is our CD. Um, and this is actually again the deluxe CD. So this is you can buy that package. We're gonna have at our upcoming shows that package that I just uh, held up is gonna be like a ten dollar package. And then you can just buy that pamphlet alone with a digital download code. Okay. So will, I mean, will these items be available uh, Saturday at your album release show at the Zephyr and Kent? They will be. Yeah. We're going to have uh, some CDs, some of these booklets, some uh, t-shirts. Uh, oh, great. But yeah, we will have a lot of that available for our upcoming show here. And um, then, God, man, that it's just really coming together for you. I, really I have uh, no other way to say it than that. I'm just, I'm so proud of you because I know that you oh, have been working so hard for so many years and so many bands yeah. um, and some have come and gone. Some are still together, but this one, this band really seems like it's poised for, um, for greatness. I mean, literally this, I think is just, this is your shot to take a swing for the fences, you know? I mean, every little thing is in place. And I have to ask you, so um, the title track, what made that the standout in terms of like, this is gonna be the name of the album? Oh, that's a great question. And so the album is called The Feeling Never Ends. And uh, Scott wrote that song specifically for his friend who does that Pan Ohio cancer ride. Um, and if you listen to the lyrics of that song, it's talking about, uh, you know, the, the, your veins are on fire and, uh, you know, I've got a feeling that never ends. It's about that giving everything you have uh, for others and for making that ride and just the intensity and, uh, and, and, and the, uh, the power behind it. So I also think that phrase, the feeling never ends, really does a great job of just kind of talking about that, that flame, that love. Uh, that passion that you might have for anything for us. It's for the, the music and for each other and for, you know, just uh, goodness and love of life. And it just, if you look at that uh, photo again, we, we went round and round. I mean, cause it's all a process trying to figure out what you're going to do. Now are those items from yes. your oh, personal items? Okay. They are. So this is an amalgamation, a collection of meaningful items from all four of our lives. Okay. Represent something uh, a, a point in time in our lives um you know be it recent past or, or, or far back in our time uh, you know you've got the, we have a song called radio that's the radio uh okay. used to have by his bed at night that he would listen to joan jett and uh Lee reed and just get you know inspired when he was a child um, i mean just all these items have some special meaning for one of the four of us throughout our lives and I, I, I couldn't be more pleased. And again, Mark took on himself to kind of arrange that and, and make those photos. And it's just, it just, it's like you said, man, it kind of feels like serendipity, the way things have just kind of folded where we're like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And all of a sudden the answer just, just, you know. It, it all, it all led to this and. Um, it feels perfect. So I'm going to go, I'm going to cut in the, uh, the video here for okay. uh, Middletown Road, but why don't you go ahead and um, if there's anything uh, you want to say about the writing of the song, the recording of the song. I mean, we talked about the video a little bit, um, just kind of how the song came to be and, and uh, maybe how you guys knew this has got to be the single. Okay. Well, Middletown Road, uh, like I said earlier, is, is the story, the origin story of Scott and his wife, Beth, and how when their romance was first budding, they would... Uh, start this journey from opposite points and they would meet at the top of this hill uh, in Pennsylvania. It's like a storybook romance, you know? I mean, can you, can you imagine? It just sounds, it sounds artificial, but it's legitimate and it just, it makes your heart swell. 
Um, and so uh, it's and his, it, the way that he delivers the message. You can just, it's just so visceral. You can just, you can just picture it. I mean, it just instantly conjures up this mental image of these two, you know, backlit by the setting sun, you know, and then not wanting that moment to end, just staying up there, you know, and, and you know, we'll stay here for a while, you know, and that these lyrics, and you just hear it. So Joe and I, you know, for the past couple of years, the bass player, I mean, that song has such a, a lovely kind of ostinato rhythm. This just do, 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 do. It's just like this very kind of like homogenized, very like steady rhythm throughout the whole song that lays this really well established foundation to the song. And then of course the melodies and Mark's, Mark's uh, guitar tone and his solo. I mean, it really, really touches me. And I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to out him, but as soon as he developed that, uh, he and I both have uh, some musical influence from the past. And I was like, oh my God, I know exactly who you're channeling there. And I think if, if anyone's familiar with it is, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to jump up. It's so damn beautiful. And I just, everything about that song really just encapsulated our, our feelings and our experience. And I feel like um, we, we, we had tinkered with making that the name of the album, Middletown Road, but it just felt maybe a little too, um, to uh, focus too, too narrow, yeah, yeah. Where the feeling never ends, just had a bigger, uh, more kind more of epic, like, yeah, yeah, scope. So, I mean, it's just artistic choice, but it very well could have been Middletown Road. And it just so, so what about the song? Um, when you listen to the playback of that, if that I don't know what the order that the album was recorded in, but uh, between the four of you, what made you guys collectively say, Well, that's the single, that's what we're going to push to get radio play? That's a good question. I I don't know if I have like the best answer for that. It just, I mean, cause there were other contenders for sure. Astronaut you brought up is a, is a, just feels so radio friendly. Um, uh, dog is very radio friendly. Um, you know, but Middletown, I just roll with me is, you know, is like, man, that's, got, that's the one that we've gotten the most kind of like universal, man, it's got a real competitive, you know, right. like, put together vibe but for i don't know for us middletown was the one i mean it might have just been the favorite of the moment but it just had it just i felt had it was the full package and it encapsulated everything that you're trying to say and uh it just i don't know maybe that's just made our hearts swell the fullest at the moment and that's why we chose that one but um perfect okay. no yeah. i mean that's uh Encapsulated and encapsulated everything I wanted to hear about that. So, without further ado, um, we're going to go ahead and play the clip of uh, Middletown Road, City of Invention, and uh, hope you guys enjoy it. So 
was Middletown Road, uh, City of Invention, Feeling Never Ends is the name of the album. I'm here with Peter Haru, the drummer, and uh, I think you guys can see by what you just saw that it's kind of an obvious choice for the single there. It, uh, it pretty much, I think, um, really is a good example of what the album is, what the feel of the album is, and I know uh, Peter can probably uh, expound on that a little bit, but... Um, yeah, I just want to give you this uh, platform, Peter, if you're, there's like some um, more dates you want to plug, upcoming shows or the various websites you guys have for all your music. Yeah, sure. Um, just a note on that video, too. That was not even something that we had like uh, planned to do. That was such a treat when Mark Watt sprung that on us. And I mean, again, at Utah, I'm... I'm I'm a fairly emotional heart on my sleep type of guy, so it doesn't take much to get me worked up, especially if you're talking about something music related. But when I saw that, I mean, that was all I could do to hold it together because, as you just saw, that entire video was a compilation of our experience in the studio. And Mark had maybe the foresight or maybe just the good fortune to realize that he had recorded a couple full takes of Scott singing that video in the studio and had enough other footage to to just compile a video for that song. And it turned out to be such a loving tribute to our time in the, in the studio. Which okay, was, so let me stop you there. So yeah, yeah, video was recorded over a long period of time, not just like a three day weekend or something. That's right, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, okay, cool, I see what you're saying there. Yeah, that, so, was a, uh, that was a compilation of just footage of our time in the studio. So actually most of the drum footage you saw was me on the very, very, very first day of recording. So that was August of 2019, 2020, sorry, lost a year there while I'm looking, 2020, and uh, shoot some of that footage of Scott singing it was from uh, much later in the spring or late, late winter. 
so yeah, that was that was a holistic shot of kind of our whole experience in there. Uh, you saw Dave, the engineer. You saw some nice choice shots of uh, his gear and uh, of just what our experience looked like in the studio. So it was, I mean, it was truly something that I will never forget, a very magical time for us. And it was so sweet that he was, it was like uh, so rewarding that he was able to just Put together something and that sometimes looked, the best things in life are just happy accidents, you know? Yeah. And it looked like it looked like it was on purpose, which was like, <laughs> oh, I cannot believe you did that. Yeah. All yeah, right. You know, well, no, <laughs> I just did. Uh, um, yeah. But so uh, upcoming dates. Well, like I said, uh, as we're at the day we're recording, this is the 9th of September. Uh, so on Saturday, September 11th, uh, two days from now, we're going to have our, uh, our official album debut party with the Buffalo Riders of the Zephyr Patio in Kent. Uh, the weather looks like it's going to be idyllic. Uh, I am just, I cannot, you know, it's like Christmas. I have two more sleeps until that show. Two more sleeps. <laughs> I'm super excited. Uh, then the following weekend, uh, we are actually at the historic Ray's Place in Kent. Um, for Franklin the- Avenue. <laughs> That's Franklin Avenue. You brought it up. I wasn't going to say anything, but yeah. Like All roads lead to Kent. Go ahead. These shows are literally on Franklin Avenue. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're upstairs for the Music Round Town Festival, uh, which is just one of many festivals the city of Kent has, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it features uh, as many local bands as they can cram in. So, I mean, all, all these establishments around town, restaurants, bars, uh, outdoor venues, places that wouldn't typically have music do end up having music uh, for the evening. It's wonderful. Uh, they'll have that. They have uh, Blues Fest, Beatles Fest. Uh, I know there's more. Um, so it's lovely. It's really a thing. And now Kent has this, uh, I don't know if they have it out your way now, the Dora. Are you familiar with that? Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the designated outdoor refreshment area. So Franklin Avenue uh, has gotten worse, my friend, because it is now corn. It's now blocked Please off. Answer me this question because yeah. I haven't been back to Kent for about nine years, but. Okay. Sadly. But um, has it really just like worked into looking like Hudson? Like with this place called like Acorn Alley and three five story parking garage and uh, have you not seen any of that, Eric? I saw like the beginning of it. Like I was back in uh, 2012, the last time I was there. Okay. And then before that was 2007. So wow. Okay, so in your mind, wow. Okay, yeah. No. And, you know, I left it in 2002 and I moved yeah. the first time, and it was a you know, small little quaint little college town. And then, you know, Kent actually started doing really well, like I guess their college sports teams and things. So they actually started getting money into the university and then that kind of just spreads out through the town. And I know they moved like the Green Avenue Bridge. They did, yeah. And the library, yeah. I think was what raised and then built again. Have you not seen that? That was a long time ago. Yes, okay, yeah, My guess. yes, okay. Sorry, I'm going to be incredulous there. Well, I, mean, I can just kind of set it up that the first time I was back in 2007 was to make a, a film in Sandusky. So I wasn't really in Kent okay. so much. I kind of visited family and friends and that was it. And then the last time was just the week before uh, a week of Thanksgiving uh, in, okay. in 2012. So it was like I was trying to get together with people. And a little brief kind moments, of hold, yeah. Like, uh, let's meet at the loft. Let's do this. And then the next thing you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Get back on a plane. So, Well, the loft is alive and well. Um Yes. Tito's tacos. That briefly that? answer your question. Did gentrification occur? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, does Kent still remain Kent? Yes, it does. It's not, uh, I don't think we've, I don't, boy, I don't want to be um, disrespectful to surrounding communities. We are not Hudson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, yes, uh, there's been a lot of integration with the university and town. There's a, there's a, uh, it's called an Hudson, Hudson is a wonderful community. No problems Absolutely. with Hudson. It's just Hudson should be Hudson and Kent should be Kent. That's just. Oh, no, I, I heard some stuff, Eric. I heard, I heard you, I heard you talking some stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There's an Esplanade now that starts right in downtown Kent and it, it kind of carries through downtown because there's been, so Erie street goes all the way to uh, Haymaker now and it crosses over to the university. They've raised a lot of stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, you really, should come home. Oh, I, you know, I got to say I was heartbroken the other day, even though the place I, know what Starbucks, just I did so many open mic shows and I had such a great time at Brady's Cafe. Yes. So yeah. old I am. Anyway, um, yeah, I was there. it became a Starbucks, but I'm like, oh, my God, they're going to get rid of the location. You talk about the corner of everything in Kent. Why? Yeah, it's, very, it's very heartbreaking. And in fact, 10 years ago, maybe 
they got they raised the Robin Hood, which I know. And you know what it is now? It's a extended parking lot for Wendy's. It is the most tragic thing. They uh well, you know, people as don't want to talk about wanting to, to get their burgers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, as much as they talk about wanting to preserve the historic buildings, the story behind that is tragic. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk a bunch of cement, but it's really a shame because the Robin Hood was I mean, my grandmother, who's been gone for a number of years now, was born in 1928, used to go there for formal dinners in the 40s and 50s. They would dress up and go to the Robin So, I mean, it was truly an historic and magical place. And, of course, a, a landing place. You know, it's, it was my sister, Duke Brady's, across the street from it. And I've, I've, played, I've played countless shows. I, I've seen the sunrise in that place. Yeah, I love Brady's. Uh, and the name yeah. of the place, um, oh, God, I'm having a brain fart. The, the, um, the restaurant that's the train car, is that still there? The Puffer Bell it is. Yeah, it, okay. yeah. So it's not the Puffer Bell anymore. It was, it was uh, repurposed. It's still the same building. In fact, that's, I don't want to spoil anything, but you'll see that in my upcoming video. There's some, it was filmed on location, some of it there. Okay. And it'll be very evident to you right away. Uh, uh, Mike's Place out there on 43, is that still, still there? Still there. Um, homemade X-wing fighter in the yes. first lot. Yeah, still there. That's why we're still Kent. You know what I mean? You can't take, <laughs> you can't take that away from us. You, I mean, it's like you got to have the quirky artistic stuff. I get people don't want to have graffiti under the uh, the bridge there. Yes, the they do. And stuff, but <laughs> yes, they do. Right. They want that. But yeah, I mean, it gets there. erased, and it's just like the new stuff comes in and it takes That's away it. the flavor, you know. And I, I yeah, get yeah. That, that flavor, you know. Kent is still Kent. Um, truly, and I know gentrification can be a touchy subject, but truly, uh, this has injected so much life into Kent, and there is so much... Well, financially, for sure. Financially, but really just kind of like spiritually, too. I mean, there's so much more activity and so many businesses, local small businesses, not chains, that are thriving now in downtown. The Kent stage is doing really well, right? It is. They're undergoing renovation. They just reopened. It was like... It was like they they turned the faucet on all the way. So there was zero activity, obviously, out of safety and concern. And then it was just like, boom. And now they are because they were really booming before. In fact, three or four days before the curtain fell last March, I took my father to see. Um, uh, uh, um, oh, my gosh, it's, it's right now. a really wonderful concert there. And it's going to come to me. Uh, he sings um, a bunch of 80s tunes. Howard Jones. We went. And saw oh, Howard. yeah. Wow. It was I mean, I've seen, I've ever seen two. I just saw Dead and Company uh, two nights ago, and I saw King Crimson a few uh, last week. At, uh, wow. But uh, out of, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of performances from bands ranging all over the genres. And Howard Jones, anytime I see a, an act come through the Kent stage, it's so wonderful because it's such a small, intimate venue. Well, the acoustics are amazing because it was actually constructed to be a live venue before the, the movie theater took over, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, it's very dead. It's a very very dead, honest room. So you're only going to hear uh, what they want you to hear. And I mean, I've had the pleasure of playing there on multiple occasions, and uh, I've seen I've seen I saw Colin Hay from Minute Work there. Uh, I've seen uh, Dweezil Zappa, and I mean, just you know, countless countless acts there, and uh, it's always a, a it's so small. It's so intimate. You know what I mean? You don't get that in a lot of places anymore. So yeah, it's a real treasure and they, they are doing very well. Awesome. Well, before we uh, sign off here, if you get the chance and you run into this guy, cause I have not talked to him in years after doing multiple shows and recordings with him. If you run into Jed Dobbins, tell oh, him gosh. Said hi. I, have I will do. I have not seen Jed in a long time. I, but I mean, I know he's out and about doing yes, yeah. all like the Kent fest and Oh, yeah. Akron and all over the place. But if you see him, say, uh, I say yeah, absolutely. Oh. But um, thanks for being on the show, Peter. And uh, you know, best of luck to the album, man. And uh, it's sounding great. And um, here's to uh, to many more and uh, nothing but the best. Hey, cheers, Eric. Thank you so much, man. And thank you for uh, much uh, success to make your own fun. I think it's wonderful you're doing this. And I feel super honored and uh, and delighted that you invited me in. No problem. Say hi to the guys for me, and uh, you guys have a great, great show on Saturday. Thanks, you too, brother. All right. Bye-bye. See ya.